One of the most common questions that people ask when learning to code is what language should I learn first? And I had this exact same question all those years ago. I went to a trusted website called Stack Overflow and I got some very interesting answers. Now, eight years down the line, I'll be honest, it doesn't really matter what you choose. Choosing your first programming language is a lot like choosing your first starter. Regardless of which starter you choose, you're going to go through the same gym battles and the same story. Now, does this mean that one starter is better than the other two? Obviously. Just like that, choosing one programming language can make things a lot easier than choosing the other two. All this said, I believe that Racket is the best language for someone to learn if they want to learn about computer science. Now, you can't really find a job where you have to code Racket. But are we learning to code to find a job or because we love computer science? So just some context about myself. I am a sophomore at the University of Waterloo. And if you are a math or computer science student, you're required to learn Racket in your first programming course. This course that I took, and I'll have some lectures linked below, served as a very good introduction to computer science, even though I already knew how to code beforehand. And I think that learning Racket, generally speaking, is very beneficial for anyone. So what is Racket? Racket is a functional programming language. Functional programming is a paradigm where we treat everything as a function. Racket treats everything as a function and treats them as first-class citizens. And the language itself is very mathematical, which is good for people that come from a mathematical base and it also helps with understanding the flow of logic. So here we have a function written in both Python and Racket that adds two numbers. We see here that our Racket code has a lot more brackets. And while this may seem a bit complex at first, it becomes a lot easier to understand because Racket as a language does not have as many syntactical memorizations as something like C or Python. Instead, Racket has a much more mathematical approach, and this helps with learning the flow of logic. To make things even easier, Racket's editor, Dr. Racket, has a stepper tool. This stepper tool goes into your code and it runs it, and you can see in real time how the code transforms. And this is really useful for beginners as you get to walk through how a code runs. One great thing about Racket is its focus on recursion. Now, while recursion does exist in every language, Racket sort of forces you to learn recursion before learning for loops. Most people learn for loops and then learn recursion. In fact, at Waterloo, you don't even get to use for loops throughout your entire first year. Now, recursion is the same in every language. In recursion, we have our base case. We assume that our current statement is true. We apply some code and we rerun our function. However, in Racket, we get a more cleaner understanding with the connection of recursion to mathematical induction. Because what is mathematical induction? Mathematical induction is you assuming something is true for x is equal to maybe 0, 1. Then you have an inductive hypothesis where you assume it's true for n minus 1, and then you solve for x is equal to n. Here we have a recursive function to find the sum of a list in Racket. We see here we have our base case, we have some code logic, and then we rerun our function. This code can be proven to be true by writing a inductive proof. By, write, by being able to write an inductive proof for your function, you can prove to the reader that what you have written is correct. Having recursion within Racket as a core focus helps programmers, helps new programmers understand the code that they're writing and being able to prove that what they are doing is correct. Taking what we've learned so far, we can kick it up a notch by familiarizing ourselves with abstract data structures. In Racket, we can represent data structures like a tree using lists. In Racket, the bulk of abstract data structures are just lists. And this is very useful because it helps people to understand how data is structured and how applying certain algorithms is efficient. Racket really enforces this idea that data at the end of the day 
even if it's in an abstract data structure, is really just data. The way we interact with lists, strings, and arrays is no different than how we should interact with a binary tree. As Racket is a functional programming language, you get access to two very interesting things. First of all, all variables in Racket are immutable. That means that you cannot modify any variable that exists. Instead, you make a brand new variable and modify that. This makes things like debuggings and bugs a lot more easier to find. Now, this is not very efficient, but hey, this is your first time programming. Secondly, you might be thinking that if you can do so much recursion in Racket, why not have a function to do recursion for you? And guess what? You do. The functions fold R and fold L are higher level functions that apply recursion to your lists or data. They can do it from the right side or the left side. Okay, so by now, to recap, you've learned how to interact with functions, learn to build functions, use functions as variables, how to build and use abstract data structures with a recursion. Whoa, this is a lot of stuff. And remember, you still haven't written a for loop and probably never will. I hope this video has encouraged you to take the time to learn Racket. I have linked some tutorials below showcasing how to use Racket. I would appreciate if you guys would like and subscribe. Have a good day.